This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We end today's show with a new report on how U.S. policy toward Latin America has fueled historic numbers of asylum seekers. This past weekend, Mexican President AMLO, uh, Andres Manuel López Obrador, hosted a summit on how to address the steep rise in migration from Latin America to the United States. Participants included Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel, Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro, Honduran President Shamara Castro, Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry, and Colombian President Gustavo Petro. After the meeting, AMLO said he would ask President Biden to open a dialogue with Cuba and called for an end to the U.S. economic embargo of Cuba. Juan, you have this new report out. The current migrant crisis, how U.S. policy toward Latin America has fueled historic numbers of asylum seekers, the report published by the Great Cities Institute, where you are in Chicago, where you're also a fellow. Can you lay out what you found? Yeah, Amy, I think the, the, the key aspect of the report is that we've had a lot of attention in the past couple of years to the historic surge in uh, migration across the border. Uh, but there have been few media accounts that have examined the direct responsibility of our federal government in fueling uh, this current crisis uh, through its foreign policy. And, uh, and also, those narratives in the media have largely uh, failed to acknowledge the long history of U.S. intervention and wealth extraction in the region and the decades of neglect of Latin America by all administrations, Democratic and Republican, of the last 60 years. And so w one of the m most interesting things is that uh, the report outlines the evidence that it's U.S. economic warfare against three specific countries, Venezuela, Cuba and Nicaragua, that is a significant cause of the latest migration surge. Uh, and uh, for instance, uh, the, uh, the, the migrant flow to the United States has changed dramatically. A few years ago, during the Obama administration and the Trump administrations, we were talking largely about uh, of, of migrants from uh, Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. That has changed uh, almost completely. Uh, Venezuelans, for instance, uh, back in in 2020, there were only 4,500 Venezuelans that were apprehended uh, at the southern border. That's uh, less than three years ago. Now we're up to 265,000 in the first 11 months of the of this past fiscal year, FY 2023. The same thing for Nicaraguans. Uh, a few couple of years ago, it was 3,100 that were encountered at the border. Uh, uh, this uh, last 11 months of this past fiscal year, 131,000. And of course, Cubans. Uh, 14,000 Cubans were found, uh, were apprehended at the border in 2020, 184,000 in 2023. And uh, we're seeing this enormous increase from these three countries. What do all of these three countries have in common? They are all being subjected to United States sanctions, economic warfare that is uh, reduced and, and really crippled the economies of these countries. Uh, Venezuela, for instance, between 2017 and 2020, lost about between 17 and $31 billion in oil revenues uh, because as a result of U.S. sanctions. Now, we're just hearing this past weekend, after, after our report came out, uh, that, that uh, the United States is beginning to temporarily uh, limit the sanctions. It, it's, uh, it's allowing Venezuela for the first time now in several years to sell oil uh, back into the United States. Uh, but the sanctions have inflicted enormous harm on the Venezuelans. And the other interesting thing to note is all, all the media attention has been focused on the Venezuelan migrants. Almost as many Cubans have entered the United States in the last two years as the number of Venezuelans who have entered the United States. And in fact, the flow of people from Cuba uh, in the past two years has been greater than any time in history. More Cubans have come to the United States in the past two years than did after the Cuban Revolution in 1959, than did after, uh, in the, during the Mariel boat lift of 1980, than did during the Bacero crisis of 1994. This has been the largest a flight of Cubans into the United States in history. Uh, the difference is that most of the Cubans are settling in Florida, 
where there is already a large Cuban American community that is helping them to integrate into the uh, into U.S. society. So it's not gotten as much national attention. But there is an enormous problem uh, in the Cuba migration as well that the United States is confronting. Uh, so I think that's one of the interesting things. All of this surge is a direct result of our government's economic warfare against particular countries. So I think one of the things that the report urges is that the Cuba embargo has to end, the Venezuela sanctions have to end, and the Nicaragua sanctions uh, have to end if the flow of migrants from these countries is going to be reduced. Uh, the other thing that the report shows is the historic neglect of the United States uh, to Latin America and the Caribbean. This past year, the United States gave total foreign aid to all of Latin America and the Caribbean of $3 billion. $3 billion. Compare that to the $113 billion that went to Ukraine or uh, as much money went to uh, in foreign aid to Latin America, which has 650 million people, as went to Israel. <laughs> uh, Israel had about $3.8 billion in aid. Of course, it's about to get a lot more. So the inequities in the U.S. foreign aid are not helping to lift uh, Latin America, creating the sanctions are reducing the ability of people to survive in the in the region. And then we're surprised by all these people appearing at the border. Uh, and so I think that's the, the main lesson that we have to learn. And also, of course, President Biden now is urging about $14 billion in his new package that he's proposed to Congress for border security. Here's one interesting fact most people are not aware of. The Migration Policy Institute reported this some time back. The United States spent $333 billion between 2003, when the Department of Homeland Security was created, and 2021 for agencies that carry out immigration enforcement. I want to repeat that, $333 billion for immigration enforcement and uh, for ICE and uh, Border Patrol and fences. And what do we have? The highest level of migrant crossings in history are occurring right now. All that money did nothing uh, to slow the uh, the migrant flow. So obviously, it's it's so, sort of like a, a money for prisons. It's wasted money. Juan, we want to thank you so much for the report. And we're going to link to it the current migrant crisis, how U.S. policy toward Latin America has fueled historic numbers of asylum seekers at democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez for Democracy Now.